What's up guys? Justin here with the Character Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to continue our series on crowds in iClone by talking about how we can animate a crowd along a path. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that this is the part of the crowd simulation functions that were added in iClone 8.4. So make sure that you've updated to version 8.4 in order to access these features. If you do want to check out iClone 8.4, I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, then I do receive a commission. But um, you can get a free trial as well if you wanna give some of this a try. But let's jump over into iClone and take a look at this. So what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna use the crowd functions in order to generate a crowd that walks along a path. And so in this situation, we wanna start by going up to the create option. And we wanna draw our path. So to do that, we're just gonna to go to create and click on path, and then we're just going to click in this scene. So I'm gonna click right here, we'll click right here, and we'll click right here. Then when you're done, you can just hit the, um, you can actually right click in order to place that. And so what we've done is we've just generated a simple path. Now the first thing you wanna do with your path is you wanna go over into your modify settings. So you wanna select your path. And probably the best way to do that is to click on one of these little uh, these little arrows right here in order to get that to select. But we're gonna click on the option for MD, um, which is going to be your motion director walkway settings. And what we wanna do is we want to adjust this walkway like this. And so note that you can do this in order to set the width of that walkway. You can also edit different points in here just by clicking on them like this. So we could kind of like scale this out if we wanted to. And so you can move these points around if you want to do that, um, just depending on what you're trying to do. And so in this case, right, we're going to click on this point. We'll move this one over here. And I'm just trying to smooth out this path a little bit. So I'm not getting that kind of like overlapping, but we've set our path width in here. We can click off of this to be done with that. And now we're ready to go. And so let's talk about how to add a single character along the path first. So let's jump into our actor settings right here. And I'm gonna find a character to bring in and we'll just use a character that everyone can kind of follow along with. We'll, um, we'll add the Camilla character where she's in the dress. And so I'm just gonna drag that character into the scene right here like this. And so when we do that, that's going to bring Camilla into the scene. And so what we wanna do is we wanna animate this character walking along this path. And so to do this, we're gonna use Motion Director. And so the best way to get started with Motion Director is to go to Window Workspace, and you wanna go into the Motion Director Workspace. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you access to your Motion Director controls over here. And so with our Motion Director controls, what we wanna do is we're gonna have Camilla selected and what we want to do is we want to set this so that she is we're going to go with auto on path and so when we do that what we need to do is we need to pick the path that she's going to go on and so in this case all we do is just click on pick path and then just click on the path now notice you're going to get a load imd failed that's because there's no actual animation data associated with this character. And so we need to go back and we need to add that to our Camilla model. And so I'm gonna go in here and, and so in this case, remember that these are basically intelligent motion files. And so you can find them by going over into your motion director. Now, I don't remember how many of these come by default in iClone. There are two packs of these as well right now. So there's the pedestrian actions and the athletic run, which you can get that are gonna add additional walking styles and idle styles. So I think you should have some built in though, um, but I'm not 100% sure. And so what we're gonna do though, is we're just gonna pick a casual movement for our motion director. And so in order to do that, we're just gonna take this casual all, and we're just gonna drag it on our Camilla character. Well, now if we go back into motion director like this and pick our path, this is going to work and it's going to align her or it's going to set her up with that path right here. And so now if we were to click on the button for start like this, what's going to happen is she's going to do the casual walk 
along the path. Um, and so you can see how she's kind of automatically doing this right here. And what we would want to do if we wanted to store this movement is we would just want to set this to record when we're doing this. And there's a little random skip in there for some reason, um, but you can see how she's basically animated walking along this path, just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on stop right here. So you can use this and then if, if you want her to walk along the path, you can click on the record button. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna record those keyframes over time. So it's going to record this in here as she walks and it's just kind of adding those to your animation. So we'll let this go just a little bit further, maybe to right here. And then we're gonna click on the option for stop right there. Well now those keyframes have been stored to her character in your animation like this. So you can use this to add a singular character walking along a path inside of iClone, just like that. Now, say that we didn't want to add Camilla to this scene. Say that we wanted to add kind of a crowd. And so there's a different way that we're gonna go about that. So to do that, we're gonna go up to Create. And we're gonna click on the option for Scatter Generate Crowd that's gonna pop up the window for generating a crowd right here. And so in this case, what we want is we want the spawn region to be pick object. So we're gonna click on pick object, we're gonna mouse over this, and we're gonna click on this path right here. And notice how we've got these sliders in here that allow us to set the number of actors or characters that are gonna be placed in here, like this. You can also adjust things like the spacing of those characters and the direction, right? So you can set them where some of them are going in one direction, some of them are going the other. You can set them where they're all going in reverse or all going forward like this. Notice how you can click on the option for generate placement in order to re-randomize that or re-spawn this in here. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna add some actors. One thing I do recommend, by the way, is I do recommend saving before you do any of this where it's adding a bunch of actors in here. I have found that I've gotten some crashes in here when I'm doing this, um, probably due to the amount of data that it's processing when it runs through this. So you might wanna go ahead and save your project before you start adding these characters. But now what I wanna do is I wanna set up my actor pool so this can randomly generate those characters. So to do that, you can either click on the button right here to add actors directly from a folder. You can also click on a tag and you can do a search or you can just go into your content browser and just drag characters in. And so I have a number of characters from the social group bundle, which is basically these uh, modern people. These are kind of set to be kind of like background models. So they're a little bit lower poly than the character creator files. As far as I know, you can include character creator um, characters as well. Um, but this just has kind of a collection of different people in it that are kind of optimized for this kind of thing. Um, you can see how it says crowd set, which I think means that these are set up for basically kind of like the lower poly in here. But you can use your own characters as well. So some of those bundles have been provided to me by iClone so that I can try them out and use them for uh, both demonstrations and tutorials on this channel as well. Um, but I just have a number of these in here and I'm just going to drag a few in. And just for fun, we're going to drag in maybe the business person right here. Um, let's see, maybe a casual person right here, this older character, just all sorts of different characters like this, but then I'm also going to drag in my Camilla and my Kevin. So those are character creator files as well. I do wanna make sure these are tagged, by the way. So in this case, Camilla, I want to tag as female adult. Um, Kevin, I wanna tag as male adult right here. And there is this option in here for deploy with variant materials. So if you're generating a bunch of different actors, but you're not using more actors than you have spots in here, you can click on deploy with variant materials and those crowd characters will kind of randomize the clothes that they're wearing, or at least the colors, the clothes they're wearing so that you don't have just like duplicated characters over and over again. So right now, if I was to click on the option for deploy actors, what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate a crowd of people and place them 
in the scene. We're gonna place these characters in here like this and notice what that did for the most part. And um, my character creator files, by the way, are not set up with those variant materials, which is why they look exactly the same. But you can see how this basically came in here and this, um, this placed your characters in here on these different points. And so you can adjust this, meaning if you wanted more characters in here, you could just re-click the button for deploy actors. Again, though, this is probably a situation where clicking on the option for save before you do this would probably be a good idea, but um, I think we're gonna be okay for right now. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to generate this crowd, but we have a problem with the crowd. And I'm actually going to remove Kevin from the list um, so that I only have one character in here that um, doesn't have the random colors in there so we don't have repetition just over and over and over again. Okay, and so I'm good with this. And so what we've done is we've generated this group of characters in here, but the problem is if we were to jump over into motion director mode and we can't run this yet because we haven't finalized our characters, but the problem right now is there's no animations associated with these characters, right? But what we can do is over here, notice how there's options to include either motions or IMDs. So in this case, I wanna use the IMD files. And so I wanna bring in a couple of those IMD files from that uh, pack that I have. You should have some of these built in without buying the pack. You could at least do the casual, I think, um, for a couple of these characters. But I'm gonna bring in a few of these. So like, for example, I've got a casual walk female specific, a casual walk male specific. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring a few of these in here. So maybe this crowd sim scroll or stroll right here. Now notice that when you do this, these have tags associated with them. And what those tags are is they're going to allow you to match them with the tags that are um, applied to your characters up here. So for example, this casual walk female, I only want applied to female characters. The casual walk male, I only want applied to male characters. And if we had like kids or elderly in here, I guess we do have an elderly. Um, but if we had those in here, we could also include those tags right here because it's going to do tag matching in order to apply this. Now, this is where I would probably hit the save button before you do the deploy um, because what it does is it basically generates all of these actors and then it applies IMD files or movement files to them. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this and we're gonna click on the option for deploy actors right here. And so when we do that, what that's going to do is that's gonna go through and it's going to apply all of this information to these characters. And so when it does that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna set them all up for movement. Um, so you can see how this is setting all of those different assets things like that. But now if I was to jump over into motion director like this, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of my crowd generation function. And so that kind of finalizes all of this. But now if I run motion director, these characters are going to have the animations applied to them. And again, this is make sure that you save before you do this but this is gonna kind of process these. But then if you watch, these characters are going to kind of move along the path. And so you can see how this is using those intelligent motions in order to animate those actors along a path like this. And so um, there, there is a little bit of like collision avoidance going on. So notice how these characters aren't like clipping through each other too, too much. Um, they are a little bit, I've kind of jammed them in this smaller space right here, but Notice how it is animating those characters walking using those animations, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing that we didn't do that we probably should have is we did not set this, is we did not set this to record those actions. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do a shift click to select all of these and I'm gonna set them to record. And then I'm gonna click on start. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna record all of those movements to these different characters that are in here like this. So you can see all of these people kind of walking along the path and they're even kind of like running into the end of the path and then turning around and walking the other way. Now, again, I've kind of like jammed all of these characters into a smaller space right here. So obviously there's too many of them for the space that's in here, but this is generating those movements. Well, now if I click on the option for stop and I play my animation, notice how that animation has been saved in here. So you can use this in order to quickly create characters walking along a path 
in iClone. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. If you've tried these tools yet, I just love having that conversation with you guys. We'll continue talking more about the crowd features in iClone in future videos. Um, if you are interested in checking out these tools, I will link to those in the notes down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.